Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2019. Brought to you by Dell Technologies and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to Las Vegas, here at the Sands Convention Center at Dell Technologies World 2019. I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host here is Dave Vellante. Two sets, five hosts, three days, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, all of the action for Dell Technologies, all the component pieces. Happy to welcome back to the program, Ashley Garak Perwala, who's the president of the Server and Infrastructure Services at Dell EMC. Ashley, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. All right, so you know, we actually had Sam Grocott on, and we were talking about all the product lines, and he said he's the, the father of power going across the line. He did admit that the power line goes back to Power Edge, which of course is your baby. That's right. Give us the update, lots of discussion at the keynote, always a change in your world, so uh, give us the latest and greatest. Sure, we're, uh, we're about 25 years old now, so uh, Power Edge has lived on for quite a while. Uh, we've got to be over 30 million servers out there uh, by now, so we've uh, we had a really good um, Dell Technology World so far, more to come, but some of the, uh, maybe some of the list real quick of announcements that we've had and we can talk a little bit more about them. Um, in servers, we actually went a little bit early from Dell Technology World and, and lined up with uh, Intel to launch Cascade Lake, uh, bringing Optane into uh, server class memory. I think the industry's been waiting for it. Uh, we're ready to deliver now. And so that was earlier this month. We've put uh, quite a bit of um, advancements and enhancements in our open managed enterprise and in securing uh, the platforms. We also this week talked about um, a power edge, it's not called a power edge, so we call it the DSS 8440, and really a capstone product to our AI ML portfolio. So today we already support one, two, three, four accelerators per server. Um, now we can go up to 10. We can support uh, the latest NVIDIA, V100, uh, Tensor Core, GPUs, and it's really a unique system within the industry uh, that's going to help customers scale their training um, loads further and further, faster performance, more MIPS, uh, very, very intense box, but uh, one that's going to be I think well received within the marketplace. Did you say MIPS? Yeah. I said MIPS, I sorry. So, so <laughs> Ashley, we got a lot of pieces that your solutions fit, but you yep. mentioned one item that I wonder if you could just explain to our audience the important of. SCM is yep. something that, you know, how does that impact you know, solutions, the applications? It's something that a lot of times get lost in the whole general storage discussion. Yep. Uh, so maybe explain the importance of SCM in the sure, marketplace. Sure, sure. So, um, it, it's a game changer. Uh, it really will be, but it'll have to go in our mind through the technology adoption curve that a game changer deserves. So it's been a long time coming. We've been working on it. The industry's been working on it. Intel has been working on it for more than a decade. And if you think through it, we, we see customers using it in two different ways. In memory mode, expanding the capacity within nodes to levels that you can't reach with DRAM today at almost DRAM-like levels of performance is something that a lot of customers already have models for. They can think through TCO, they can through, think through their performance characteristics, and it really becomes something they can consider um, to enhance their portfolio today. App mode, a little bit different. As we think through software from the OS level, kernel, hypervisor, application, cache, log, database, all these levels, we're going to have software that has to catch up and allow this to be the game changer it is. But already, I'll tell you, the demand for systems that we're providing customers to begin their evaluations, their proof of concepts, their software development, has actually doubled what we thought it would be, and we were pretty ambitious. So I, I think the demand is there, and we're going to see that adoption curve when the, when the software catches up. Any specific use cases you're seeing early on? Or? Well, like I said, memory mode, I think people can get their heads around already is, are they performance, are they capacity bound by DRAM? Start to do the economics, doesn't make sense. App mode, um, caching for sure, uh, putting log, um, changing kind of the structure of how you do logs, and uh, database uh, is really going to be the killer app when we get there. Across the different um, vendors already, we've seen pretty significant increases in performance, and we're early still. But I think 
there's a few things that our customers want to get through and we're trying to help them with. So if you have persistence in the system, you have a new level of something you have to secure. And so we're spending a lot of time with our customers, helping them to de develop technology, methodologies to say, wait a minute, information, I turn the machine off and there's still information besides the hard drive or the SSD. Also, can I trust the data even though it's persistent? Or do I have to have storage services at that level that help me with things like replication or snapshot or archive? So we've, we've got a long way to go, but we're, we're really, we believe this is a game changer and we're developing towards that. And, and, and cost-wise, you're saying slightly more expensive than DRAM. Uh, but Probably a little bit more than slightly. Yeah, okay, more expensive than DRAM. And, and relative to, to, to flash, obviously more expensive than, than flash, but yes. much higher performance, right? Much higher performance. Um, and so it's just a modeling exercise, uh, but it, it'll reach levels we haven't had before. And then from a software developer point of view, as you go forward, you can really think about scale out systems differently. If, you were, if your application was bound by capacity of DRAM or memory, this changes it quite a bit. So you're talking about a new programming model, essentially, That's right. right? That's why it's going to take some right. time. But, but you would expect maybe uptake in financial services early on? Is that fair or not necessarily? Yeah. Across healthcare? all verticals. Yeah. I think it's going to be where um, enhancement or performance can, um, you know, if you pay three, four, five X the cost, but you get three, four, five X the, uh, the capability or even less, you have to think about it. But there's some applications where latency, where uh, performance of the database are so sensitive and such the bottleneck today that it's well worth it. When you look at the innovation pie that's going on in, in servers, how much is like architecture, hardware architecture versus sort of software and, and management? Can you sort of, I know it's a sort of general question, but give us a sense. Sure, the, you know, I think is interesting is we are investing as we go forward, I think into a brand new era. So, uh, I mentioned earlier, we're, we made it to 25 years old. What's going to happen over the next 25 years? So, I think most of the architectures that we develop today are highly, highly optimized for bringing data into a processor, calculating, storing. And, and we have very balanced, efficient, high performance systems for that today. What are we doing going forward? Well, we're not necessarily bringing the data, describing the rules, called software, and then getting the answers anymore, right? Now, what we want to do in a lot of situations, we want to bring the data, which is the most valuable asset. We actually kind of know the answers already. We want it to calculate rules for us, and that's the output. That's a different architecture. That's a different way of computing. And that's why you're seeing these heterogeneous architectures starting to form, accelerators, a lot of technology going, and innovation, and venture capital, and and talent going towards really building that new model going forward for the next two decades. Okay, uh, Ashley, we heard a lot about cloud this week. Mm -hmm. When I looked at many of the solutions underneath, I kept hearing the same answer. VxRail, VxRail, VxRail. Um, I, I, I've talked to some of the team, there is more than just VxRail in some of these solutions. You know, I had Sam on to look at some of the other pieces, but VxRail has been a rocket ship for the last couple of years. Uh, and, and of course, uh, you know, the servers underneath driving a lot of that. Can you talk about how that plays into your portfolio and uh, you know, so, some of the architectural discussions we are seeing? How, do, how does that bleed into the HCI and hybrid sure. cloud discussions? Sure. So, if you think of the journey we're on, 10 years ago perhaps, maybe even more recently than that, customers really were making two different choices. As a matter of fact, you guys know as well, I was organized into two different organizations, one to deal with hyperscale and one to deal with enterprise capability. And, and customers can see that. They, they want to be able to operate in both domains, but even we were organized differently. And if you go maybe five years ago when people started to talk about software defined and HCI, we finally had a mechanism to say, you can build scale out architectures, we can automate this capability for you. You don't have to actually spend all your OpEx, your administration, your talent, your time, just keeping the infrastructure up and running. And so people broke out of IT by project by Gantt chart and into flexible architectures. Right? Next thing they said is, but we still aren't really operating, we're operating in silos of very flexible architecture here in my data center, very flexible architecture in the colo, very flexible architecture in software defined or SaaS or cloud. How do I bring it together? So 
we, we believe there's a consistency of platform and infrastructure that allows us to move to a consistency of operations. VxRail offers that today because we uniquely can integrate with VMware and vCloud Foundation to build where now we can take care of the automation, the lifecycle management of the hardware. VMware, together integrated now, can take care of the lifecycle of the software stack, all the way up to the IaaS layer or beyond. And now we have the ability to say you can look upwards, you can develop, you can build on that. And even more so, if you want to then stitch that together and have that be the control plane, you can now build that out to other native public clouds. Now you have a hybrid cloud. We can actually get there, we can actually organize around it, build it. I mean, it's a, it's a breakthrough for our customers. And then add on that, some customers have come back to us and said, you have the expertise to do all this for us, can, you, can I just consume it? Um, I don't actually need to control it. And in that case, we can offer it as a service. And we, we previewed that as Project Dimension last year, and now the teams are really happy to bring it to fruition all the way to beta with customers uh, today, and really give customers kind of that choice. So what's behind that? I mean, you got a team of people sort of monitoring everything, you got obviously a lot of automation. Uh, what, what's the customer conversation like? I mean, it's early days, yes. but what do they want to know about, do they, do they just want to say, hey, you take care of it? Or do they want to peel the layers and say, okay, I want to peek behind the curtain before I sign up for this? Yeah, so it, on the platform side, customers want to know how, how does the integration work? Really, where do I have to spend time, energy, can I really live at this IaaS layer? Can I live at the PaaS layer with Pivotal? Can I live above that? How do, how do my workflows uh, get managed? And when you say, well, kind of in the environment and the methodologies you already use today with vCenter and vMotion and things like MPKS, then I think you see a light bulb go off of, okay, I, I can really leave the administration to the machines and the automation. Then the customer, um, who's interested in moving everything maybe to a com consumption model, then they have the next question, which is, can I have consistency not only of infrastructure and operation, but of consumption? Mm -hmm. And that's where an as a service offering really starts to highlight the fact that we can meet you on your journey wherever you are. Some customers aren't ready for that. Some are just right there saying, that's really the model I want to move to for digital transformation. Yeah. Okay, uh, you got roughly a $20 billion business growing at uh, now almost 20% a year. So, pretty good year last year. Um, give us the update on your business. Uh, why are you being so successful? Uh, and I got a follow-up question on component sort of supply, but. Okay, sure. So, we, we did have a pretty good year last year. Uh, we don't break out servers, but servers and networking, as you said, right. about $20 billion, growing at 28%. Um, why? Well, I think we have a, uh, one of the most capable portfolios of infrastructure. We're uniquely trying to make sure that we um, are operating within the Dell Technologies uh, portfolio. And so most customers, Dave, have not come to us and said, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to have like 10 more of you guys come meet with me and talk to me about a portion of my business. They said, why can't you come and provide all of my needs? But I don't want to compromise. I don't want to have one best of class and then have to compromise across my other needs. So really building kind of number one, all in one place, is that promise that you don't have to compromise. Really has changed the dynamic with a lot of customers being able to say, this is my essential IT infrastructure provider. They have what I need. So that's helped quite a bit. The, the nature of uh, our business, I think, is that we are operating from the smallest customer, you need one, all the way up to customers who need a million servers. And we're able to operate um, in a consistent Power Edge tenant across all of that space. Then the, uh, um, I think in, you didn't mention it, but in hyper-converged, mm. uh, we're seeing growth rates that kind of put the server business to shame with, uh, you know, we grew 65% in Q4 in an industry that's growing 40% that's on fire. It's a new business model, it's, it's still emerging, but customers, the demand for hyperconverges uh, continues to go forward because that operating model, simplicity, elastic, scale out, automated, is, is extremely powerful. At component supply right now, component pricing is a tailwind for you. For years it's been a headwind, is that right? It's flipped? Certainly, or not so much? Yeah, certainly the, the last 
two years has been sort of an unprecedented rise in some of our commodities in terms of cost. Uh, we're seeing that be deflationary or stable at this point. So it's really changed a little bit of the dynamic of um, how customers were operating within their own budgets. So now I think we're more in what we're used to in the, the beginning 23 years um, as we go forward. Huh? So, Ashley, la last thing, you talked about you used to have kind of the hyperscale business. Just give us the update. I, I saw a quote out there that you know, Dell puts more gear out there in hyperscale environments than anyone. Can you just give us a little context as to what, what that means? Sure, sure. Um, you know, as, as we go forward, um, I think we've seen others say that they don't operate in certain businesses, they don't want to be in tier one, I, I, and you won't hear that from us. I think where we can add value, and we have incredible assets in terms of engineering, modular data center capability, capability at the edge, um, real assets of software, supply chain, delivery, across the board. We, we, uh, we want to be able to help customers build their infrastructures. And in the service provider community, I think we've already built up uh, relationships, credibility, and technology to help them compete. Our standard is if you do business with us, we want you to win in your segment. We want you to transform faster than your competition. And we think we can do that for people. And I think we continue to see quite a bit of success in the service provider space. All right, well, really appreciate the, uh, the, the updates and congratulations on all the progress Thank you, you made. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, for, for Dave Vellante, I'm Stu Miniman. Uh, getting towards the end of day two, three days, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Uh, thank you, as always, for watching theCUBE.